The first time center to suggest that your career or area of responsibility in the world relates to a personal ambition to attain prominence and overcome problems regarding self-expression. You've done that. You're yeah. in, now look what you're doing. Well, she's 12 now. Yeah, but it's on the yeah. yeah, it took a long time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, your goals include personal happiness, financial security, general and well-being, and mm -hmm. personal fulfillment. Okay, in order to achieve the self-sufficiency, such much hard work is required to overcome self-limitations. Nice. Yeah. Periods of gloom and discontent are certain. But eventual success will come through your ability to manage others, mm -hmm. practical ability, and strenuous, protracted effort. Mm -hmm. Right? Fits yeah. you, doesn't it? Yeah. Progress may be slow, but you're sure to gain a good reputation, honor, and credit through persistence, acquired ability, worldly wisdom, and continued effort. A strong ego must be involved, must be evolved, and an agreeable social persona adapted mm -hmm. or adopted. These qualities will enable you to overcome feelings of fear and self-doubt and to face the challenges of the outer world with the courage and self-confidence, a free soul with true sense of worth and purpose. Now, you remember something about the first house, the first house, the ascendant energies. That's the projected self. That's the, it's always got that Aries powerful projection, okay? We say we have a persona, a personality. That's our first house. I have a Sag rising. Me too. So, see, so we, we, we how, how many of you, three of you? Huh? What's your ascendant? Do you know, honey? Scorpio. Scorpio, and yours? Leo. Leo? Virgo. Virgo. So we got Earth, and Sag is fire. Mm -hmm. Fire. Fire, yeah. and water. water. Interesting, huh? Good balance here, actually. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk about that, too, in a little bit here. Okay. Second house Saturn suggests secure as an area of responsibility in the world relates to acquisition of money, status, and material possessions. You're required to develop prudent financial liabilities, thrift, mm -hmm. economy, and a solid conservative investment strategy. Yeah. That's you have that. I have mm -hmm. uh, good. It's, con it's conjunct Neptune. Well, so it's kind of like. Well, you could get money. Well, you know, you know, yeah, you yeah, should have. You should have invested in oil. Really? <laughs> yeah, Neptune. Yeah. Is this Neptune rules all that water, stuff. Water, yeah. Yeah, water, the, the sea. The you can jump Neptune, it's not necessarily bad. No, it's not. It's, it's not an affliction. You can manifest like, what you yeah. feel like. I can lose money. It just well, means I can gain money. Yeah, but yeah, I can go the other way. But you could, you'll gain through your spirituality. Uh, yeah. True. Like if I, if yeah. I have a vision, I can probably achieve it from that. Yeah, there, see, that's a. That's 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 practical. You have to make it practical. Yeah, it grounds her Neptune. Yeah. yeah, she said it best. If I have a vision, I can bring it into concrete reality. That Saturn, yes, yes. Saturn will help me bring it into vision, mm -hmm. into uh, my visions into practical mm -hmm. application. Mm -hmm. She's real good at even taking abstract little things mm -hmm. and bringing them into expression. I notice that the way she talks. Mm -hmm. Financial growth and business expansion will require much hard work and uh, diligent effort. However, success will eventually come through steady but slow returns. Mm -hmm. Land and property deals are favored. A heavily afflicted Saturn in this position may create a lack and loss in matters of money and, that, and, and material gain. Can go both ways. We need to know what the whole chart is. It, we, we're taking it apart. I did, by the way, when I do charts for people, I give them a computer readout. I give it, you know, I'll give it to you. The computer can't do what we do as astrologers. It can't integrate everything. But I, it's good to have it because you can kind of see, oh, I got Saturn in the house and doing this and this sign and that. But when you're an astrologer, you're going to take and you're going to bring it into a whole. You're going to you, you know, you use the, uh, the sense of unifying all that energies and bringing it into manifestation to the, describe that soul and that spirit of that being. Okay. Okay. Third house, Saturn suggests that your career or area of responsibility in the world relates to ability for mental discipline, concentration, mental control, orderly reasoning and logical thinking. Much hard work is required in communication, writing and obtaining relevant educational qualifications. A profession in teaching, administrative accounting, publishing, or some kind of research is likely. Third house Saturn suggests that your career or areas of responsibility in the world relates to an ability for mental discipline, concentration, mental control. Did we just say that? Yeah. Good. Why well, I'm reading it twice. <laughs> so I don't know why it stopped on me. It stopped. Uh, it, it collapsed on me. Maybe it's a good time to just let go of this for till the next time. Um, I want to uh, give some things to you. Um, I put together for you today. Uh, I have a tendency to lose things today. Mm -hmm. Is that that Mercury retrograde stuff? Okay. <laughs> where did I just. I made some stuff. You know, <laughs> and I don't know where it. Oh, I put it on my desk so I wouldn't forget it. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's funny. Yeah. Okay. 
I want to take you through this a little bit. Uh, make sure everybody gets one. Okay. Here you go. Now, I've had a lot of people that I've, that I've lectured, taught, and they always beg me for this uh, particular last sheet, but we're going to kind of, I want you to just learn these and get a familiarity with them, okay? Do you have an extra one? Yeah, it's got a lot more. Mm -hmm. So, and for some of you, uh, you're very advanced in this room. I want you to think about something. I teach you to learn this craft of astrology, but I want you to do something more than that. I want you to go out and start teaching yourself. For me, to get you into a level that you're not just uh, a learned student, but that you're a teacher, because the teaching will teach you more than you can learn any other way. There's nothing like standing before people and having to come up with the answers. And sometimes you'll say, well, I don't know enough to do it. I say, you do know. You know more than most everybody does out there. So you're going to have some advanced people come into your group, and they may ask you a question you don't know the answer to. But there's nothing shameful about saying, I don't know, but I'll know next week you come. See, so yeah, I'll get that information for you. Um, you. You need to be good and kind to yourself and realize that you need, none of us, including me, I don't have all the answers. Uh, I like to think I do, but I don't. So, and so what, we're, what we're dealing with is understanding it's so important that you look at the full structure of a chart. And if you see the cardinal is the emphasis. Uh, and if I see Saturn, Mars afflictions and cardinal signs, that to me indicates they're going to have physical problems more than anything else. Cardinal signs are physical, okay? Uh, Cancer, Capricorn, uh, okay? Um, Libra and uh, uh, Aries. Those are very physical signs. So you get a cross set up in those cardinal signs they will generally have a physical problem of some kind of real affliction on some level, physical. Um, in, um, in my medical astrology book, it said that cardinal signs are the most sensitive of all the signs. So I that, think right? that would make sense. Yeah. 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 Uh, you know, out of all the versus mutable, mutable would be the next sensitive, and then fixed would be the least sensitive. Okay. I, I can see how the cardinal signs have like this tone, yeah. like nervousness. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. There's more of a childishness mm -hmm. to them. Yeah, well, the cancer is yeah. involved in that. The child. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aries, a little. Exactly. They're all kind of easily young heard. Ones. Mm -hmm. I never yeah. thought about it. Capricorn feeling self judgment. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Wow, that yeah. is beautiful. I never thought of that in that terms before. Mm -hmm. That I never did. That's amazing. Cancer, the child. Mm -hmm. Aries, the, the over sensitive, heard easy. Yeah. Libra, yeah. I want to make peace with everybody, everybody and make yeah. everybody like me. Yeah. yeah. And then cancer is, yeah. oh, so. emotional, oh, you hurt my feelings. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Mm -hmm. that. That's a new insight for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So Aquarius and the fixed signs, steadfast, possessive, stubborn, tenacious, uh, the cross of attachment. You know, so I said, it's hard for them to let go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, especially their relationship and it's time to move on, but they just can't seem to break loose, you know. If they're married to a mutable sign, the mutable will take off. Doesn't care. And you know, <laughs> mutate on changing. I, I, I've had enough of those. That's me. You know, you know, I was always quick to walk away. You know, but if it's not happy, I always say either you live them together, you love them together, or you're dying together. You, you, you gotta have a choice. I'm not gonna live together with somebody I'm dying with. Mm -hmm. No matter for what. You know, I'll move on. I guess that's why I've been married so many times. Huh? Mm -hmm. Jesus, that's all. I once say. read that a lot of the serial killers have a lot of immutability. Mm -hmm. um, because it affects you on the mental plane, there's a lot of... The suffering. Yeah, very, very astute. I read that too. But I don't think I've yet got to that level. So I, need, <laughs> I was the most wanted man in the country, but I didn't kill anybody. I didn't even hurt people. They called me the gentleman robber. I used to never take their personal money. I always take their money from the business, but never their personal money. Is your cross mutable? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. In fact, okay. uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so do you count mid heavens? You know, I don't. Because if, if I were to count my mid heaven, then I would have a fixed well, um, type. Actually, I do I do count it, but not. it's, it's a little different. It, it, if you're looking at uh, uh, crosses, yes. Oh. If you're looking at uh, pentacle, five-pointed stars, yes, that point is in, will mm -hmm. become a, a very major point. Um, but you also have to realize your center has some of that same significance. Mm -hmm. Okay. So... Okay. Okay, resist change, stubborn, tenacious, the cross of attachment. The thing about the fixed signs, you know, we say they're stubborn, but Jesus, 
what does it take to graduate in honors and go through school? It takes yeah. discipline and persistence mm -hmm. and uh, stubbornness to yeah. you know, get through their, their, their work they gotta do. The, the, the mutable signs are changeable, unstable sometimes, adaptable, the cross of mental suffering. My, most of my suffering in my life's been mental. Well, Nine years in mental. prison is surely not so much physical, it's mental, living in a cell for nine years. You know, but I mean, instead of sitting there and vegetating, I used it for what? All the mutable. It reminds me of the, the hermit from the tarot card. They seclude, they seclude themselves from society for the purpose of higher learning, yeah. spiritual learning. Mm -hmm. I think I was went there for that reason. Like I didn't know at the time. You know, yeah. I remember writing uh, the psychological test that I ever shared that with you. They give you psychological incomplete sentences, and you have to fill in whatever comes to mind. Oh, wow. And uh, awesome. one of them was a father. One was my mother, and one was this place. I never forgot what I wrote for those three. Um, I wrote uh, um, a mother. Oh, I wrote my father is dead because I never knew my real father. I was told, you know, I, never, I told he died before I was born, but I don't know that. Uh, and then I wrote a mother. And you got to remember, my mother's married nine times. Uh, a mother is a woman who suffers from the fruits of her pleasure. It's, it's true way too often. Yeah, it was for her. She didn't want to have children. And she didn't raise us, she put us in boarding homes. But then, because my dad was in the war, my, the father that I thought was my father. Was yeah. my. And, and uh, the other thing I wrote is interesting, and it was very prophetic. I wrote for this place, I wrote reminds me of a monastery. <laughs> <laughs> now from a, from a person that was deprived and, and literally removed from all spiritual thinking or any kind of uh, sense of, um, how would you say? Influence. I was totally, yeah, I was totally soulless. I mean, I was at a point in my life I, I, I didn't care to live. Yeah. I told my parents I'm dead physically. I'm not dead physically, but I'm dead every other way. Mm -hmm. Please don't communicate with me anymore. Wow. I don't want to cause you any more pain because I'm, I'm, just consider me dead. And so they did. So, <laughs> so I went through nine years. Nobody went. Towards the end the, of my the nine, the nine is the ending. It's a transcendent after death. In, in some cases. Yeah, yeah, it was for me. Yeah. Yeah. You're great. And so, so then we'll go to the next page real quick. The four triplicities. Now what I've done for the, you is just kind of give you some, some meaning, if I can, uh, of these uh, uh, positive energies, if you take and put the planets there, okay? For example, you see that uh, both Mercury and the Moon are subjective and very dependent upon signs and aspects to get uh, meaning. This is very important. Don't give the moon meaning so much as what it, it's pure receptivity. It's a soul. It's a subconscious. It's it takes on color and meaning from what is running up against it or with it. Mm -hmm. You see that? Mm -hmm. So if Mercury is uh, trying the moon, you got a good thinker under pressure. Why? Because emotional is moon. Mercury's thought, right? Excellent memory, retentive mind, emotions in agreement with them. Okay, uh, with the thoughts. They tend to have good control. My teacher, Percy John Newton, in prison used to say to me, um, moon, moon afflicted uh, Mercury's are very often fools. Mm -hmm. they, because they act very childish when they are uh, emotionally uh, uh, excited. And so they speak very childish and say childish things, act like children. And uh, you know, like uh, who was it said last week? Somebody jumped up on the table. And Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's talking about his girlfriend. You know, I don't no, think they're. They I never have the opposition. Yeah, the opposition. Yeah. Have you yeah. ever acted foolish? Yeah. Childish. Sure. Yeah, we all. Have. <laughs> we all have. We all have. <laughs> no, I look it. I look very young. I don't have something to do yeah. with it. But um, yeah. no, I think I'm very mature. I got come across very mature. But I don't know. I guess I'm my. When I'm happy or when I'm excited, then I come across like a child. When I'm very excited, yeah. I. But, but that's not a bad thing. No, no. You know, it's <laughs> like, but you, to be able to look at ourselves honestly and prospectively to see ourselves in astrologically is, is a, to me, that's a gift too. You know, people tend, to, oh, that's not me. You know, okay. Uh, and look at, we got Mercury to Venus. Mercury to Venus gives pleasing conversation, refinement of speech, a happy mind, knowledge of beauty and art. Okay, that, that's just very simple things, okay? Moon harmonious to Venus gives romantic feelings. Harmonious feelings, often a loving mother, a peace, a peace through the maternal role can come just through that alone. 
Okay, Venus the moon, a loving mother. You just moon is mother. I have the opposition. Okay. So, okay. I love my mom. Any questions while we move on? I, okay, so the Jupiter uh, we have in the, in the Earth signs, I just use these for examples. Um, uh, Jupiter to the Sun, magnanimous spirit. Who's got that in here? You do. Rose? Yeah. You've got Jupiter's Sun, okay? Mm -hmm. I think you have Jupiter conjunct the Sun. Yes. Okay. Oh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice. makes sense. Gives spirit, love of religion and philosophy, long journeys, prophetic spirit, sympathetic and understanding. I have Jupiter trying the Sun. I think it's giving me prophetic abilities, okay? Mm -hmm. I think that's what Jupiter and Sun does. It gives life to the, what to Jupiter, which is prophecy, okay? Jupiter's Jesus, okay? So all that stuff. Okay, uh, Jupiter uh, trying Uranus, inspired genius, original outlook in religion and philosophy, makes very new age approach to spiritual ideas, compassion for mankind. You know, as people say, I love mankind, I love humanity, I mean, but I hate individuals. <laughs> but I have a hard time with people. Yeah, I mean, that's always such a funny thing. People say that. That's so Uranus, so you know what I mean? I just love everybody. You know? Love. It's the Aquarian age, you know, love and um, peace, love and harmony, right? That, that was the songs of the day of the hippie era, right? From here? Huh? From here, I think I'm in the same era as you. Yeah, you got it. You got the hair. That's where that oh, came from. Okay, creative musically, it's so on the nice. Uranus. By the way, some Uranus, Uranus is a higher octave of Mercury, and very often it gives great music talent and good ear. Look at Uranus' symbol, two ears, two yeah. receptive symbols mm -hmm. going outward, and the cross and the circle underneath. The notice the spirits on the very bottom, and the Uranus. You know, it's like, a, you know, it's the, it's the age of prophets. It says in the last days, the uh, your yeah. sons and daughters of prophecy, you may not dream dreams, you may not see visions. All that subconscious stuff. That's the age we're moving into now. That's why you're, it says your sons and daughters of prophecy, you know, your old men will dream dreams, your young men will see visions. Even upon my hand means too, and that's women. I will pour out my spirit and they too shall prophesy. So everybody's becoming a prophet today. Okay. You know, that's Aquarius. That's what it's all about. But they're, they're, because of all the attunements out here is listening. It's two years like you see what I mean? But the spirit's taking taking a beating right now. The, this age. The spirit. Well, yeah, we're coming out of the, the emotional dark age. People are completely have been aware. Exactly. And, and the cross is in between those crescents and below it is the spirit. The spirit and of love and life is being destroyed on this planet with this new age. And that's why you got rebelliousness, you got overthrow of dictators. Yeah, all this stuff that's going on now, people finally rising up and in mass and communicating like never before with all this social media. Let's, I mean, even on the negative side, you got these gangs now in uh, Oakland, I saw the other day, they come in, to, they get together in hordes and they come in and rob people. They <coughs> robbed, the, robbed the train the other day in Oakland. They took everybody's money and got phones from them. But, but um, the, uh, the Pluto and the, the Capricorn, being, Pluto being Capricorn, that brings that out, right? Yeah. All those secrets that are in society that are being held from the people. Yeah. 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 Oh, you, it's a great time, yeah, really. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The older yeah. Times. You think so well in astrology. You, know, you guys, has, you got to just keep impressing me. Stop this. Okay. So we, we, we just uh, create a music, especially if Venus is a good aspect. Independent thinker. Freedom loving loves the surprise and shock. Uh, by the way, if you, you ever thought about humor, humor basically works because it shocks you. Mm -hmm. It's like a surprise. What? I didn't know what was going there, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like you're taking somebody on a little thought process and then all of a sudden you throw something in it and it just shocks the hell out of them. And that's what makes you laugh. Mm -hmm. It's like if you've seen a little child, you poo, you know, and they Oh, <laughs> oh I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. See, that made us laugh. I know. But see, then you ever see a child laugh when somebody does something like uh, uh, they do something very bizarre, make some funny sound, yeah. it shocks the child. Instead of crying, sometimes they'll cry. But it's very often they just break out laughing. And then you keep doing it, they keep laughing, they keep laughing. And that's shock. It's the shock of value. That's Aquarius, by the way. That's, that's Uranus, okay? Mm -hmm. People that have strong Uranuses are generally good at this shocking you. So yeah, they, they shock you, but they, and very often if it's positive, they're good at humor. 
by, by throwing a curve on you, just about when you think you got to figure it out, they'll throw another curve. You think, oh, I thought I had that person figured out. Yeah. My gosh, I haven't figured them out yet. They have been with them all this time. I didn't know that. And and Aquarius says, I know, right? I know. It should conjunct my ascendant also. Uranus. It's so, seven, seven degrees. Exactly right there. Oh. Yeah. So, <laughs> you energy. Humor is important. Yeah. Yeah, very important to you. Mm -hmm. So we go to the next page, the four triplicities. Social. These now we're dealing planets. By the way, this is important. See where I've got the planets equal the energy, the signs equal the attitude, the houses the area of life influence. Nice. Remember the the sun gives life and vitality, the moon governs cycles and functions of life. When you're doing and learning over the next whether you read the book this week or uh, I, when we learn this cosmic key, you're going to realize that the most dangerous aspects to the life are the sun and moon afflictions. I almost always see them when there's death, because both of them are there. What do you mean? Oh, no, I'm just laughing. Um, <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> you know, I'm laughing at my own chart. <laughs> yeah. No, my own chart. Um, my moon is in the sixth house, and yeah. it's squaring my sun, and I've just like health issues galore. I've never been close to death, thankfully, because I've yeah. found ways to deal with it, but that's why what I What signs are they in there? My sun is in Pisces, my moon is in Gemini. Gemini. Yeah. And is there anything else on that cross? Like anything else for him? Uh, well, moon is conjunct to Mars. Okay. Oh, so that's involved in there too. Yeah, Mercury is conjunct my sun, but it's out of orbit. Yeah, it the other almost side. always is. It's yeah, never gets right. over yeah. the, what yeah. seventy degrees from the sun. Yeah. So, yeah. so I have an opposition between my sun and Uranus, and when I reflect back my life, there have been some times where I have almost died by accident. Sudden, unexpected things. Yes. Yeah, that's wow. Uranus. Like yeah. Three times. Three times. Uh -huh. Wow. Uh, twice, I, I've almost drowned. Mm -hmm. What? Yeah, Seriously? I've almost drowned twice. Once in a river, and then the other time I was swimming with my brother, and he was littler than me, so he was pushing me down to keep air. Yeah. Wow. Whoa. Do you have Neptune in the, anywhere or the Neptune usually has something to do with that. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Yeah, well, my Neptune is conjunct Uranus. Well, that's it. It's well, right there um, with it. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Sudden that's unexpected death when you were drowning. Yeah. Yeah. That's so what I would look for. Yeah. Accident where, yeah. And I, I had to choose before that accident, do I want to die, yes or no? I, my intuition asked me. And I said no. And I was before that horrible accident, and I never forget putting on my seatbelt. I was putting on my seatbelt as I merged onto 95, and that would have never happened like that. You know, and you, you had that seatbelt on when you had the accident? Yes. Just barely. Wow. Barely, and I had like barely any sleep. As soon as you entered from on the ninety-five, from what street were you in? Oh, I was uh, I was in North Carolina. Oh, oh, but you were ninety-five. Yeah, so I was. It's the deadliest road in the nation. Did you know that? Yeah, 95? I was. I was traveling with a, an infant in the back, but what happened was I was going about seventy miles an hour, which is usual, but there was a, a slight hill, and I turned around for like thirty seconds to grab a bottle. And by the time I turned back around, I was over the hill and traffic was completely stopped. Oh I slammed into an SUV, the car spun, 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 and then it finally stopped. My daughter slept for the whole thing, but oh had I not had my seatbelt on, You'd have been dead. I would have been propelled through the windshield. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. And Did anybody get killed in the other car? No. You're so blessed. Sure. Yeah. yeah, but I, I knew, because I think that we, we have occurrences where we have exit points, you know, but yeah. we yeah. decide to keep going for expansion. See how she, Notice the Saturn stuff, how she defines mm -hmm. the truths, the knowledge. She takes Jupiter and Saturn stuff. Yeah. You know, and then Saturn and Jupiter in your chart that's doing that. You, you tend to have such an ability to, to uh, translate things down and yeah. define things in a way. Uh, anyway, I, I, I just am impressed by it. Okay, so, so, yeah, I mean, we're seeing this in its own room. I mean, you're seeing these energies, okay? The planets are the energy, the signs are the attitude, houses the area of life influence. Remember, the sun gives life and vitality, the moon covers cycles and functions of life. I can't emphasize enough the danger to our life is in almost every chart you look at. When we do the, the uh, cosmic key, you'll see the sun and moon are afflicted heavily, and that is because the moon is the function of the body, the sun is the life. You know, what do you say when you, you've heard the expression, put your lights out? Mm -hmm. Well, that's the lights in your chart. No, for the grand trying to be truly effective and not inert, there needs to be some stress aspect to one of the three planets involved. This is important. You do a chart, you say, oh my God, there's a grand trying. 
This is great, let me tell you about how great that is. But there's nothing pulling off that energy. So it gets locked up in that grand yeah, triangle. Yeah. And you get the laziness we talked about. Mm -hmm. There's nothing, there's no push, there's no, it's like the, the back to the Irish prayer. It's, it's not a gift to be, have life come to you that way. You need challenges, you need to have some, that how makes you strong. How does someone get out of it then? Get out huh? of that, that feeling of being lazy? Like how does someone get out of a grand shaman? Like if, for example, fire grand shaman, how do you... How I have do, a fire grand shaman. Yeah, yeah, my friend does too. I don't know how to get her. Yeah. I think she may, she may not have to. Maybe I it's just her path. It's whatever this life is, I'm sure she has her lesson. Yeah, that's actually a good answer, yeah. truthfully. You know, yeah. you can't always yeah, make people do... No, know. I just want to help, but she's always looking for help. We'll yeah. So she's, she's seeking, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, then look at the afflictions in her chart, like the squares, the squares will... She has no square. She has one square. None. Why? Well, I, I know somebody like that who has nothing but trines in the... Oh, I guess she was chart. Oh, yeah, I'm sure you want to my but, but this man has, like, everything and anything. It looks... Totally fine, but I know. he's been abused. He spent uh, four years in prison, yeah. and it's, it's been a long time. All that. But, yeah. but his demeanor is just un it's always positive. Yeah. Have you ever seen one of these in a chart? Um, well, so I haven't seen one in a chart. No, I never seen one. Didn't you say you have that? Didn't you say you have that? No, I've got a uh, five point stuff. Oh, you've got a five point stuff. Yeah. 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 yeah, one of my you students know. brought to me, so, she was reading yeah. one of the books about the pentacle on the chart, you know, five point. Oh, okay. And she came to me and said, I think some of the charts you don't know. Now, I've been in prison all these years studying my chart. Yeah. She brings me a chart and says, you've got a pentacle in your chart. Said, Come on, all these years. Yeah, 50, 52 degrees apart, they're all. And she says, uh, and the interpretation of it is they either become, the, it's a symbol that can be denote a criminal. Oh, yeah. Or a uh, magician. Wow. Is that amazing? I'm be a magician. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, the, so, uh, the what's the word I'm looking Not for? Not literary. Yeah. Sorcerer. Yeah. Sorcerer. Yeah. 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 The sorcerer. Yeah. Somebody yeah. can. Yeah. It's also like a resourceful. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. So what, what, the reason I pointed this out to you is uh, you say, oh my gosh, that's great. I've had charts like this. But what you don't see in this, this who, who recognizes this star, Jewish? Yeah, it's Star David. right? <laughs> yeah. Well, watch this. This is all great. And this is in Earth signs, by the way. Mm -hmm. And this is, in, this is in water signs. That's how they work. Mm -hmm. Water is what? It's family, mm -hmm. emotional. Mm -hmm. Okay, look at Judaism. Mm -hmm. Family. Oh, yeah. Okay, I mean, <laughs> there's not another race that's, or, or people mm -hmm. that have intermarried more than, in, than, than Judaism. The yeah. cousins, the third cousin, the second cousin. They, they, because they, you don't marry outside, you, you, you got to marry you. Now watch this. What you don't see in this is this. This, why Israel as a nation and the people have suffered so much. Mm -hmm. Double crossed. Mm -hmm. They've been double crossed everywhere they went on this planet. Mm -hmm. It's happened. It, uh, Always they get, they get, they... Is, they that, is, that, is that like the, an example from a chart? Huh? Is that an example from a chart? It's an example of um, what that star represents, okay. yeah. And in the chart of the nation, they were founded on this symbol. Okay. Okay, so so they have adopted all of this. They've, the great uh, cumulative power of the grand, grand tribes, because mm -hmm. Earth is in a grand tribe. That's power, to accumulate from the Earth, to work with the Earth. You have to water a seed in order for it to grow. Yeah, you got the water signs now. Yeah. They work together, don't they? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, but the only problem is there's the curse within that symbol. Okay. And that's the double cross. And they look at it, their na the nation's history. They've been double crossed everywhere they've gone. Mm -hmm. See? Mm -hmm. All right. So go to the next page. Um, this is something I, I, I've had people beg me for this, to, to have a copy of this because. This really lets you understand how this crosses work. If you look at the uh, moon, square, Mars in this cross, moon, square, Mars, uh, it's, it's a, we're going to look at the negative meanings of this. Emotionally impulsive. Why? Mars is what? You jump out there and don't think, just do it, right? Action. Action, Action right? Okay, moon, Mars, emotionally impulsive. Feelings, moon, hurt easily. Is that Mars, moon, right? Okay. Deep-seated anger. Why is it deep-seated, folks? Because it's the moon. It's the moon. There's so much depth. The moon and Mars. Yeah. And the moon is what? Subconscious. It's emotional. Subconscious. 
subconscious. You're not in touch with your feelings, some people are. Mm -hmm. Men tend to repress their feelings, yes, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see a Saturn moon in a man's chart, you know he's repressing a lot of it, and a lot of it's sexual stuff. And they were taught to do that anyway. Mars, same mm -hmm. way, sexual stuff, a lot of repressed mm -hmm. stuff. Okay, compulsive desires. Why is that? Why do I say that? I want you to think about that. Because Mars, it's yeah. just action, it doesn't think. Yeah. <laughs> Mars, or compulsive and desires, is yeah, Mars. Yeah. yeah, and Mars is desire, and the moon is, moon is pure habit. emotion. Okay, well, if it's, it's habit. Go ahead, anybody else? If you equate Mars to anger, and uh, you're trying to cope with your moon, then you could be acting on impulse. You know what I mean? Because your your anger is a cover for a deeper emotion, so you're more likely to make a quick um, decision based on. They can hurt you and other things. Maybe rash. Here's the thing: rash, yeah. the compulsion compulsion means you you're drawn to something over and over and over again. Yeah. You can't seem to get away from it, right? That's because the subconscious is the root of all your, is the root of all your um, habit patterns. Do you remember the little saying uh, Emerson said, you sow a thought, you reap an act. You sow an act, you reap a habit. You sow a habit, you reap a character. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. The character is all rooted in the way we think and where, where our mind takes us and what we develop. If you think on something long enough, you tend to act it out. You mm -hmm. tend to, you know. If it's bad thoughts, it's good thoughts, okay? So compulsive means you, you have no control over it. Compulsive mm -hmm. desires means very often it's with a, in a chart it can be sexual. Mm -hmm. You know, you just can't get enough sex, right? Compulsive. I gotta have my sex, okay? It's a or it medicine. can be what else? It could be food. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mars is, can also be the same thing. I find people that have uh, Mars, strong Mars, they, they tend towards acidic foods. They really like meat eaters, you know, they like that a lot. They like uh, highly acid things. Their stomachs are in a Mars, uh, a Mars square or a Mars afflicted moon can cause a lot of stomach problems. Mm -hmm. It can be ulcers because what's a city? A city, yeah. And stomach, moon, okay? Immature sexually. Why? The moon's a child in us, okay? If it's afflicting Mars, it can be immature anger, immature response to things, immature acting out in anger and emotional outburst. I had that on there, okay? So I'm just kind of showing you the negative sides of this, okay? And I, I also want you to realize that, the, remember I told you the other day there's, there's three levels of interpreting. There's the physical, the mental, the emotional. Uh, the moon we're mostly dealing with emotional, but, you know, you got, it also deals with the physical. The stomach's ruled by, the breasts are ruled by what? The moon. So if you have Mars afflicting those, you may see things that you don't want to see or you may should be aware of. Maybe you have a, a likely more likelihood of having breast surgery. Remember I told you that I find people that have these aspects of affliction stuff from Mars, I mean from the moon, that often have breast augmented surgery. Well, I have the trine, not the square. Yeah, but it often brings that. Anything, even the trine. Yeah, it can bring. But it doesn't necessarily mean bad, but it's just that. Hmm. My, my nephew has a Mars in cancer that's afflicted. And he's got oh, stomach, cool. he has ulcers. And I was saying that he also can't sleep either. He's got. Does he have his whiskey chuck for him? I'll have to talk later. Okay. I like that. <laughs> you, know, you notice what she said. Can't sleep. What rules sleep? The moon, mm -hmm. the soul, the subconscious, mm -hmm. and Neptune. Okay, Neptune. But what you're saying is fitting for that chart. That fits in exactly. Mm -hmm. you know. So if you look over here to Mars to Saturn, I got that up here. You see where. It says assertive desires, passion, energy, anger, aggressive, bone and teeth injuries, business conflicts, power and success drives, coldly aggressive and cruel, utilitarian and sex, strong drive, accident prone, chronic disease. It can be all those things, right? A lot of it depends on how the energies are used. Just because somebody has that aspect doesn't mean they're going to have all those things. It's just that these are the worst meanings for those, those aspects. And what would, what would amplify the physical potential of that? I told you. Who said what? Eternal sign. Good for you. Good. Another world to hurt from over here. Thank you. I'm glad you're joining us that way. So that's true. Cardinal makes it more likely it's going to be physical problems, right? You see how many layers you need to look at a chart? You don't just uh, Mars score Saturn. Would a cardinal sign make for someone more physically violent then? Yeah. As it could if be. It's, if instead of water, for example? In a man's chart, it tends to be expressed outwardly. In a woman's, she becomes victim very often. In a, car in a cardinal? Yeah. 
Yeah. Because she said they were more sensitive. More sensitive to it, getting it. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. understand. Yeah. yeah. So more masochistic is what you mean then? No, I said so. <laughs> more masochistic. You <laughs> heard me more. Anyway, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of a lot of people who derive pleasure out of pain, you know. Yeah. So anyway, enough of that. So let's move on. Moon emotional. Okay, we did. Did we cover all those? Um, let's go over now to Moon to Mercury. By the way, if we got Moon to Mercury on a cross, we have to have Mars opposing Mercury, don't we? You see what I'm saying? So there's so many ways you can interpret this, but I'm just showing you one, I'm taking a grand cross for an example. And I don't even have the signs in here, so you have to just interpolate that in your own mind. Emotional and mental confusion, moon to mercury. Childish and foolish and emotional speech and response. Conflict between mother and the brother. Why that? Mercury siblings. Good for yeah. you. Good for you. Mercury rules your brother and sisters, and mother is the moon. Thoughts and habits are in conflict. That's pretty obvious, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Your habits are your subconscious things. You know, you need another cigarette, got to have enough, got to have some more food, got to, you know, I'm not feeling, uh, I'm feeling uh, 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 agitated and irritated and I'm, I, I'll go get food. It's going to help me. Mm -hmm. why, this. why emotional breakdown at, at the worst? That's the, because it's a mental breakdown. We call it a mental breakdown. Mm -hmm. It can produce that. Okay. Yeah, that's great reality. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because the thoughts and emotions emotion, are yeah, yeah, yeah. The emotions in the mind are such war at war with one another that it can cause emotional breakdown, and it manifests in first and speak. Like I noticed, uh, I noticed in the news, for example, they were talking about uh, one of the politicians, it's California politician lady. They were they were reviewing her speech and how she's making all these errors in her speech, and she's. Uh, uh, seems to be losing it, right? Losing her mind, you know? But that's often that moon square and moon opposition. Did you were know? saying something about dementia? Oh, no, I thought that was something. No, but I, that's a good thing. I, I often wondered about that. I, I, there's a lot of research, there's something to be done on that, on that uh, scope. Um, I, think, uh, I think Saturn uh, to the moon uh, and can be very much likely dementia. A lot of the problems that we have, uh, mental um, problems of dementia, uh, Alzheimer's, things like that, are caused by the calcification buildup oh, yeah. in our system, and it, it gets into the brain, and it locks us down, you know, brings down. And it constricts where the blood can flow. Exactly, yeah. constriction. Yeah. And Saturn is like the snake, it constricts things, okay? Saturn can do that, okay? Constriction. Uh, Jupiter's expansion. That's why the more you get into astrology, you're going to get into, some of you are into very high uh, understanding of nutrition. And so you, I, I know, for example, I need to take magnesium. I'm, mm -hmm. I want the Jupiter expansion. I take extra magnesium. I take three a day, and most people are deficient. You just take a magnesium salt. Yes. Take a what? Magnesium you get when you take an extra salt bath, and that's a nice way to take it. Yeah. Salt bath? Yeah, Epsom salts, you know, you put oh, a, little, yeah, yeah. a handful or two in your water. Yeah, that's interesting. Get your muscles relaxed. And yeah, and there's so much to all this, you know. The, 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 all, most of all the old astrologers were, were alchemists. Mm -hmm. They studied chemistry and they understood all this. And there's so much knowledge in that arena. You can get into, uh, uh, um, you know, vitamins. The word vitamin come from vitiae. It means the sun. Vitamin. Vitiae from the sun. And where do vitamins come from? From the process of photosynthesis and plants and the change of things that goes on. The sun has actually embodied itself in that plant with its energies. Okay, Can I so. Can something a little sad that's a little irrelevant, but in 1930s when they discovered vitamins and they got really excited about that, they didn't know all the other millions of multinutrients that are included. Like, oh, we're going to have everything with these vitamins. But then with the salt mines, they made a deal to make vitamins. They, they washed the salts of the um, minerals. Um, and so that's why the salts of people became, um, I don't know, they had to put iodine in it and things like that. But, um, but that's why today it's, they're selling all these salts like Himalayan. So they're natural salts with the minerals. But for quite a few decades, we were having salt without the mm -hmm. minerals. And that's kind of sad. You know, it's better taking your vitamins, I guess. You know, it's funny. I've never used Himalayan salt until this last right. few months. Well, I've never no, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. which has iodine, you know, you need the iodine, which you're back to the trace elements in the moment. But the, I, I, years ago, 
I was vice president of a major company. We had nutritional products, and I learned a lot from a man named Herb Boynton. And uh, I remember introducing him one time as Herb, Herb on purpose, just to make, just, you know, Herb, Herb, Herbs and Herb. And he laughed, everybody laughed, and then he got up and he said, well, thank you, Ann. Thank you, Ann. Ron, my name. Thank you, Ann. Anyway, he didn't get the humor. So he was making fun of me. He said, I called him Herb. Herb, Herb, not Herb. Herb. He said, thank you, Ann. Anyway, oh, now you got it. He, he, he was the founder and the uh, uh, president of a, a company called Nutrition 21. And uh, he, he used to, we used to talk a lot about things. And he would tell me, he said, you know, he said, I've just always been amazed by how a little bit of something can cause so much an effect. And he was talking to me about LSD, for example, how a little bit can cause such a big deal. I mean, minuscule amounts of it can do this. And he said, that's why uh, nutrition is so important. He, said, he developed the only biologically active yeast selenium, for example, the only biologically active yeast chromium. These were ingestible forms that you could not hurt yourself with because some of these are not good if you get them. Anyway, if you don't get up to the plants. So he, he developed it. But he was an amazing master of, uh, of nutrition. I loved the guy. He was like a brother to me. And, uh, and I learned a lot, you know, that, uh, you know, you take vitamin E with selenium, it potentiates it. It gives it 10 times or a thousand times more power than if you just took vitamin E alone. Mm -hmm. And he, he showed me the synergy of it, all these nutrients and how they all work together. I mean, I, people that are into this would be great at that because this is all the same kind of thinking, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. ability to integrate and see the power behind little things that we don't know, mm -hmm. notice. That's actually what I do. <laughs> do you? Yeah. I'm a nutritional therapist. Perfect, perfect. You have a strong bird on your chart, don't you? You know, my the only thing I have would be part of fortune, and if you did a whole sign house, it would be my midheaven. But I mean, my moon and Mars are in my sixth house, which is ruled by Virgo. That's, that's what yeah. I was looking yeah. for. I was looking yeah. for the sixth house. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. that I think would count. Moon and the moon is the mother in the in the house of nutrition mm -hmm. and the house of uh, uh, purification. The, the Virgo is a sign of, uh, in the sixth house, all, all represent uh, uh, purification and through foods and knowledge of uh, nurturing. And the moon in there is, of course, the mother of all that, to understand it as a mother and a woman. It's very powerful. But uh, the, I'm going to leave the rest for you to read. The planets, health, sickness, and human body. I put a little page together for you. Um, the, these are just, just some things that, uh, some examples of... Uh, Mars in a chart, I just give you a little sheet on that. Uh, you know, none of this is written in stone, but you know, if I'm looking at a chart, I see Mars on the, in Gemini, for example, I'll often ask, do you have a wounds or cuts or scalds on your arms or hands? And I'll invariably they do. Or I'll say, um, they have Mars in Aries, you know, and, and, uh, or in the first house very often, you know. I'll see uh, scars or wounds on the head. Uh -huh. or, or headaches, a lot of things like that. The pain in the head, you know? There's so many things here. So Mars afflicted in Taurus or second house, injury scars of the throat, tonsillitis, for example, um, tonsils removed, possible fighter, angers over property in life, all these things. All these things, there's so many levels of seeing things in a chart. So I'm just kind of letting you see this. Mars afflicted in Cancer in the fourth house. Look for injuries, scars, birthmarks to the breast. Remember the lady I told, I said, you got a scar on your chest, on your breast? A birthmark, and she said, uh, "I said it's from a past life. You were stabbed there, and she didn't. She told me how she feared knives, and she had a had a birthmark that looked just like a uh, 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 a knife wound on her breast. Mm -hmm. So you know, you say, well, how do you see that? I don't know. Why the chart speaks to you? It tells you. It starts talking to you. The more you get familiar with this 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 amazing amazing science, the more you learn it. It's kind of like." You, you, you start talking to you. The chats are literally talk. They start saying things to you. And, and Karen, Karen told me that the other day. We were talking in the last class. We were talking about um, Karen it was doing a chart for somebody. And uh, I, I had told her in the class, I said, you know, very often you see uh, two children if you have double body signs on. Do you remember that on the fifth house? Remember I said that? Mm -hmm. And so Karen had a chart with a double body sign on it. But she said, I went there and I just knew it was only one child and I spoke it. I said, you just got one child. And of course it was right. But I said, that's what a good astrologist does. It listens to their inner spirit, not just the chart. You have to listen to both. You have to, you have to, you know, the, there's a psychic ability you develop with this, okay? 
And uh, I can't make that in anybody. I, I can give you the mechanics. Mm -hmm. Anybody can teach the mechanics of astrology. I can't teach them the dynamics, the power to make it work. Mm -hmm. That comes from the spirit, you know, your soul. That's something that you have. And everybody in this room has it. I don't doubt that. I know. I'm good at, I'm good at, I'm good at picking out astrology students. And I, those are going to go on and can be good at it. And I don't blow smoke, as they say, you know, I, you, you either got it or you don't. And I'm real frank with people. But uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a future here for all of you in this. And I want to go on and become the best. And I hope I give you the tools to make that happen. And I love you all. And I thank you so much. Thank for you. Making I love you too. Thank you. 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 And don't forget, study the cosmic key. Yes. And uh, if you want to uh, uh, get some more for your classes and lectures, it's a good time to get them. Mm -hmm. um, everybody I know, including uh, most of, by 10 of them at a time for 69 bucks, whatever, it's a good time to get them before they go up to 39.95. If you want to donate for those books today, that's fine. You can do that too, but you know, that's up to you. The other thing is spend some time studying. So when we start on it the next couple of weeks, because we have three more weeks, right? It's going to take some real learning, but we're going to do it. And we're going to do, everybody's chart's going to get a cosmic key done on it. Okay? I won't predict your death. I promise not to. But, we, but, but I'll show you how it works in your chart. I know. And uh, how to make it work. Why are you know I'm dying by some kind of accident when I choose to? Yeah. <laughs> you know what? You don't have to leave if you want to hang around and chat. And be, uh, I wish I could stay. I wish I could stay, but I have to do some things. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you.